Hi, welcome back to Animator Artist Life. Uh, quick tip today, last year we started getting into Unreal Engine for real-time rendering um, for clients to save on rendering costs and it's the way the industry is going. Um, we wanted to get Alembic exports, Alembic based animation cache from Maya into uh, Unreal Engine and we faced so much problem basically with the textures and materials just not coming across. This works out the box with Unity but we wanted to use Unreal because we prefer it. So. After lots of trial and error, I went onto forums looking for all sorts of advice. There was talks about making um, face selection sets in Maya before you're exporting. But after weeks and weeks of trial and error, um, I found one little setting in Unreal, which I'm gonna show you today, and it is the devil himself, this setting. I don't know why it's on by default. I'm also gonna run the, through the process of exporting Alembic cache files, um, wh whether it's a character or a blooming flower, whatever you want, um, into Unreal with materials that are going to work. Let's get to it now. Okay, so here we are in Maya. Here's the character mesh that I want to get um, out of Maya into Unreal. Um, there's no animation on this one because the first step is actually to just export the character. Just um, just the model, just the mesh with the material. So I'm going to select all the geometry. I am going to File, Export Selection. So here it's important that we choose FBX export. I'm going to put this in the folder. I'm going to call it um, name of my character. Um, I'm just going to call this mesh. So here on the settings we don't need animation so we're going to turn that off. We've got smooth mesh and then the rest is um, standard. We've now we, we want to make sure that we've got this checked embed media because that's what's going to embed the, uh, the materials uh, for Unreal. So I'm just going to click export selection Okay, that's the first step done. So now we're going to get, jump over to Unreal to import this mesh in. Okay, here we are in Unreal Engine with a brand new project. So what I'm going to do is we're going to bring our character mesh in. I'm going to right click, create a new folder and just call this um, a character mesh or whatever you want to call it. Double click, go into the folder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, drag and drop the FBX which is in my file here. So I'm just going to drag this into into our project, move this out of the way. It's going to come up with the FBX import options. So a few things to go over here. Um, we don't want combined meshes on. Well, sometimes we do because we want to do want to combine the mesh, but it will all be stuck together as one. So generally, we don't use it that often. Um, you want import normal, so everything comes in smooth. Um, we, I'm going to turn off convert scene and do my own rotation of 90 degrees coming from Maya. And then very importantly, you want this option on, which is create new materials. So this, this sort of reads the materials. Now generally, Alembic doesn't carry material information, but it does know that it did have uh, a material applied to it, even though um, it doesn't um, show materials as it's, as it's playing, which I'll show you. So we're going to create, uh, click import. And what it's going to do is importing all the different parts of the mesh, importing C3, 4, 5, or 17. Um, so let all those import. So there we are. So this is um, this. So basically, we want everything inside of um, Unreal just to be able to use. Uh, so so it's got access to, to the materials and, and and the mesh. So here's here's all the mesh bytes. If I if I click and uh, dragged all of them on, you'd see the character come into the window here. There we go. So I'm just going to delete that for now. We don't need them there. We just need we just we needed the the materials in here to put back onto the alembic. So I'm going to go back out to the content. Okay, and um, so now we're going to go back to Maya and I'll show you the process of exporting um, the Alembic cache. So here we are back in Maya. This is the character that we are going to export out as an Alembic cache. I've just got some, some crazy sort of mocap um, animation going on just for this demo. Um, it's just 150 frames, that's all we need for this. So we need to, ex we need to select all the geometry, all the pieces, so just drag and select. We're going to go up to cache, Alembic cache, and export selection to Alembic. I've got this set to time slider so it, it already sets the range for us. I'm going to uh, save over this one. 0 to um, 150. I'm going to scroll down. Now this is really important. You need you need these three um, options set. They might not be set by default. If you don't have these set, the materials will come across, but the, any sort of textures associated with them won't be attached. So I have these three on. So I'm going to um, export selection. 
And as you can see, it's going to run through the time, uh, the timeline, sort of geometry caching all the vertices in into this um, alembic cache. If your um, character or, or object, dynamic simulation, whatever you're exporting is, is heavy, it might take longer to do this um, and depends on the density as well. So it's just running through here. And just a quick little tip here, if you had um, um, something um, like parented into the hand, like a gun or a hand or a book or something, what, whatever it is, um, it might not um, export properly, it might be offset, it might not work. The best way to do it is reparent it to the actual joint in the in the arm instead. Okay, so that's export that's exported. It's always good to test the um, file. So let's just open a brand new Maya file and let's um, let me just turn that off and let's just go cache alembic cache um, open alembic and let's open our file just to test it's working. Okay. And there we are. I'm just going to go to um, uh, shading, use default material for now. And there we go. I'm just going to play this back. That's all playing. And because it's because it's a, a geometry cache, it runs really it runs really quick. It's quicker than you know sort of playing a heavy rig. I can really do this um, quite fast. Also, you can select one of the one of the objects. And go to your um, uh, alembic node, and you can play with the speed. You can actually speed up. So if I did two and played it back, you have to go back a lot quicker. And you only have to select one of the nodes. It's got the same alembic node attached to all the different pieces of geometry. So if I set this to say 0.5 and then try and play it back, it's a lot slower. So that's where I can find. So now we're ready to go over to uh, Unreal to import it in. Here we are back in Unreal Engine. Um, I'm just going to create a new folder. You don't have to create any folders, but I like to keep it organized. So here's our Alembic folder, and same as before. You can either go import, right click, import, but um, it's sometimes easier just to drag and drop. So we're going to drag and drop the Alembic file, which is a .abc file. Um, and here, here's the options. So first of all, it will um, sometimes comes in a static mesh. You need it on geometry cache. It's read in the, um, our frames of 0 to 150. And then here is this setting I was telling you about earlier on. This here is flattened tracks. For some reason, this is on by default. Now, this setting is the devil himself. Um, I don't know why it's on by default. It, it flattens everything and, and brings everything into just one material. You cannot apply materials. So turn this off. This is the devil himself. So carrying on, I am going to just drop this down to get um, to get smooth uh, smoother mesh with the normals, and this is important here. Create materials and find materials. As I said before, you know, Alembic doesn't play back with back with materials on it or sort of display materials, but um, going from Maya to Unreal, it does hold that information for us to be able to apply the materials back. But we just need to click these two: create materials and find materials. So with all that checked, I'm just going to. Um, yep, yeah, everything looks good. Flatten tracks is off, and import. Depending on the density of your mesh and how complex it is, now this this could take longer. So you know, I've had files with a thousand frames that have taken four or five minutes to import in, but this one's not too bad. So it should only take um, should only take a, a few seconds to import. And here we go. I think it's coming in now. And then we'll put the materials back on. There it is. It's in there already. So let's put it into this into a little test scene. Um, I haven't rotated it, so let's just rotate it up. Rotate it around. I'm going to click here to reset the settings to go to to go to the center of the grid. Oh, I've got auto save on, so we don't want that on. Let me just. Um, so it's just auto saving. You can turn off the auto save. I like to do that on new projects as well. Let's bring this back up. So let's check the Alembic file is, is, is playing anyway. So let's click play. Um, as you can see here, let's zoom back. And there we go. Alembic back uh, playing nice and smooth and it's set to loop, which you can change in the settings as well. There we go. Um, so if you click on her, um, over here you've got, um, down here you've got um, um, you've got your, your your blocking and you've got the option to loop 
um, here it is running and looping so you can you, you can do that and most importantly now with the with the evil flattened tracks <laughs> option set to off um, we have listed here this is all the possible materials that come with um, inside our alembic file now it is a bit um, it's a bit sort of you know tedious having to um, put the materials back on but it's the it's the best option we've got now you can definitely probably write some code or get some blueprint get get a developer to sort of if you're in a big production to automatically apply the textures back but in you know for, for yourself as a freelancer as a small thing it's quite quick to just apply these textures back on so what you do is you just go to but back to your character mesh what, what we imported earlier and then we just need to put the materials back on it is a bit of trial and error sometimes usually for some reason the eyes are at the top so let's just put this on and there you go. You can see the eye material has come in there already. I think the next one, I think I've seen this one before. So it's, um, yep, there goes the eyebrow. I'm gonna do the eye. Sometimes you get this, you get this completely wrong. You just have to guess. Um, another hair material. I think it's the lashes, the eyelashes that will come in next. Yep, that looks good. And there's, yep, there's the hair. And our headphones. Yeah, that's popped up there. Um, and then let's see, is it the skin next? And you can see, no, I've done that on the wrong one. So you just click undo. Drag the correct material, the jumpsuit. There it is. And then we just work our way down. Um, it's, it's not very many materials. So let's just see what's next. We just want to, yep, there's the skin. And then I think the shoes are at the bottom. Perfect. And there we go. Now you have your alembic character and you've always got you've always got these materials inside your file. So once you've done it once you can take a screenshot and just drag and drop or like I say um, create um, some sort of um, a, a bit of code to be able to just supply this back in one button. I'm not a developer myself but I mean I worked this way on one of the productions before. Um, with characters you know you don't have to use alembic you could just you know export all the bones anyway but this you know, if you've got complex facial animation or something, this is a really good way uh, of dealing with that. With that, Alembic files are pretty huge in file size. That's the only issue with them, but um, they are used in film and production a lot for sort of, you know, um, particle simulations and all sorts. Um, so let me just click play again, and we can see this um, again. And there we go. Alembic's playing back. All textured from Maya to Unreal. Alembic working well. Um, I hope that helped. Um, if you've done any of this, I would love to see what you've created. So um, if you could leave a little comment down below, um, let me know if this was useful. I'm definitely going to do some more Unreal tutorials um, soon. Um, I'd love to see what you've done. If you have managed to get um, an Alembic cache from Maya or even Blender, um, 3D Max, whatever, um, th this should be sort of very similar settings. and. And the flattened tracks in Unreal, um, catching that little horrible setting that I call the devil himself. Once you turn that off, um, that should help with, with pretty much um, a lot of different software packages. So uh, that, that's David at um, Animator Artist Life. Um, love to hear from you. If you hit the subscribe, you'll be notified of when um, new tutorials um, come up. And I will see you soon. Thanks very much.